Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to quickly introduce myself. I am Martina Flörke from Ruhr University in Bochum, where I am a professor for engineering hydrology and water resources management. I am looking forward to talking to you today about the Wandel project, about water resources as important factor in the energy transition. Together with Professor Rüdiger Schaldach from CISA, University of Kassel, I co-coordinate the Wandel project. I would like to thank all partners for their collaboration and contributions, as well as for their patience in the last three years. By the way, did you know that the share of renewables in global electricity generation reached about 28% this year compared to 26% in 2019? The increase in renewables came mainly at the cost of coal and gas. And within Wandel, we are aiming to answer the question, if water scarcity will drive the energy transition, or if restrictions on water resources will delay or even hinder the implementation of a global energy transition. In order to answer these questions, we used a two-level approach as shown on the left for addressing the energy and water dimensions at the global and regional levels. We analyzed in more detail four different energy systems in four different case studies. These were a coal power plant in Germany, a concentrated solar power plant in Morocco, the combustion of sugarcane by gas in Brazil, and a chain of hydropower plants in Germany. The key objectives were to identify energy water hotspots, which means impacts on water resources at the location of the power plants, as well as along the entire energy supply chain. Moreover, we developed solutions to reduce the impacts. And today, I would like to share with you our project results. First, I'm going to present some global results, then address the key work in the case studies and how we combined the two scales. I will end my presentation with our key findings and solutions. On the global level, we assessed various energy scenarios, including those reducing greenhouse gas emissions to achieve the Paris Agreement. Water scarcity will limit electricity production with conventional or thermal systems regionally. This map shows regional water cooling water deficits in 2040 under the sustainable development scenarios, which has been developed by the IEA. Additional technological improvements will be required to reduce water demand at the power plant's locations. Our results also show that the energy transition strategies should consider water demand and therefore the impacts on water resources. In terms of increasing hydropower production by the construction of large dams, the conservation of freshwater megafauna might delay or hinder the, a global energy transition. For example, high species richness and high share in threatened species are endangered in regions colored in red. The orange ones show areas of lower richness, but also with high share in threatened species. 
Now taking a look at the case studies. The first is a coal power plant at the VESA, which was used as a reference case for conventional energy systems. In addition, the management of two dams within the basin was evaluated to fulfill an integrated water resources management approach in the upper part of the basin. The second case study deals with the optimization of hydropower production at the Danube and the analysis of the effects on the water level and the environment, taking into consideration different management scenarios. The third case study was a constructed solar power plant in Morocco, where particularly the estimation of future water demand and water resources were of interest as local stakeholders fear the risk of water shortages. Therefore, potential water saving measures were identified and discussed with local stakeholders. The fourth case study was a sugarcane mill in Brazil where sugarcane by gas is burned to produce electricity. However, water is used for irrigation and cooling and both are subject to water shortages and droughts. The regional perspective provided a view on the direct impacts of the energy system on local and regional water resources. But what about the impacts put on water resources remotely? For a comprehensive analysis of the entire energy system, we developed a water scarcity footprint to identify hotspots in the energy supply chain. This allows a comparison of the different energy systems using a life cycle assessment, as well as to assess water use with respect to the regional water scarcity. The map shows the locations of the top three contributors to the physical water scarcity footprint for each case study in the construction phase. So, for example, the steel production in Europe or copper mining in China. The red dots visualize critical sites where water resources are under pressure. We found that the water scarcity footprint cannot answer the questions alone and therefore used further sustainability indicators. What you can see from the table is that it is possible to directly compare the different case studies with respect to a wide range of environmental impacts. The four footprints, material, land, water and climate, can account for more than 80% of environmental impacts. This is an important step leading from an environmental impact assessment to an environmental sustainability assessment. Some first results are shown here on this slide and we are going to publish these soon. For example, the CSP shows highest impacts in the construction phase as well as for the water scarcity footprint due to the water consumption in a water scarce region. In the operation phase, highest impacts become obvious for the coal power plant. By the end of this presentation, I would like to highlight our key findings and local solutions. 
Water and energy security is a local and global challenge. First, there are potential conflicts between climate mitigation and conservation of water resources and biodiversity. And energy transition strategies should consider water demand and the pressure put on water resources. The water scarcity footprint is a good indicator to identify water-related hotspots along the energy supply chain. However, for assessing the sustainability of energy projects, additional indicators should be considered too to avoid problem shifting of harmful environmental impacts. The key solutions from the case studies are the development of modeling tools and tra a training simulator to optimize the electricity production and reduce impacts in the river system. Water and energy efficiency improvements are key to reduce on-site demand on water resources. Additional water storage to overcome future drought events um, are as important as early warning systems. Considering institutional capacity in the target regions is mandatory to assess both water and energy security. And last but not least, participatory approach is important to stimulate long-term and dynamic thinking and raise the awareness for environmental conservation and reflection of management practices. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I would also want to highlight, please visit the Wandel Marketplace for additional information for publications additional material, as well as screencasts and videos. I would like to thank the GROW team and also the Federal Ministry of Education and Research for funding our research.